Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, for you it's afternoon, right? You're in the U.S. Yes, I'm in the U.S. and it's still it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. Um, so, can you give us a, a short introduction uh, of who you are? Uh, I can give you the title of my uh, personal website that says inventor and publisher. So half of my life, uh, I long life, I spent as an inventor and the other half as a publisher. As an inventor, I invented, since I was still in college, I invented things like uh, the first uh, handheld computer, uh, well before uh, Intel had, or, had introduced a microprocessor, I was already writing a database handling software for uh, Nielsen. You know, Nielsen is the major marketing research company in the world. And uh, I made they were, uh, it was back in the 70s. And uh, uh, they were collecting data on paper. They, uh, they printed tons of uh, paper from the computer with uh, past data from supermarket on every single item on the supermarket. And they had thousands of uh, uh, people going around uh, the supermarket aisles and uh, con counting the uh, current stock of every single item, writing on the paper. And uh, I, my wife was working for this and I told her, this is stupid way of doing things. You should automate the things and use something more modern, like a computer. So I wrote, uh, I was, uh, I wrote a, a small demonstration software on, on a mainframe and uh, to show how they could uh, find the right item. And I, my wife showed it to the management in Nielsen Italia. And they said, you know, we have been looking for years or for something like this. So I, we think that this could be a solution to our problems of collecting data, but please don't invest anymore we will finance all the research and development to make this happen. So we made the contract and uh, I, I started a small development company uh, with about uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, soft, mainly software engineers, engineers, software uh, people. Uh, and uh, uh, for 10 years, we developed this software. It, you know, there was not the microprocessor. So we were ready uh, when uh, Intel made their 8080 microprocessor to run it on uh, their machine. It was an international project and it was financed by uh, the international headquarters in Chicago. In the meantime, in the meantime, uh, uh, we did uh, make the electronic voting system for the European Parliament. This was 
my original idea. Uh, Olivetti, the, Itali the Italian uh, typewriter manufacturer, sold it to the European Parliament. You know, in 1979, uh, 1980 was the first year the European Parliament had uh, the power to vote on the European budget. Before, uh, they only had the consultancy. From 1980, they had the power to approve or reject it. And uh, in order to do so, every single vote had to be recorded with uh, the vote from every single uh, per people, every single person voting. How did they vote on every single uh, vote, uh, every single item? And there were a lot of items. So, no, the vote could take three hours for every item. They didn't have the time. So, they wanted an electronic system. So, they made a request for proposal. Uh, and all the uh, manufacturer of electronic system uh, made a proposal and Olivetti won, uh, was adjudicated the system because they proposed the system I device. Yeah, so automation once again. Yeah. Yeah. Aut automation and uh, instead of in taking three days to make a, a a vote, it took 30 minutes. You know, the cost is astonishing because it's not only the number of the deputy in, is three times that because there is a deputy, there is the secretary, there is the assistant, and the parliament has to pay for everybody of them for uh, being out of <laughs> in uh, so they save with an electronic voting system they save a lot of uh, cost so i have to uh, uh shorten your uh, story a bit because of the of the time uh, constraints and everything we want to discuss today um yeah. so you were you were you you developed these uh, it uh, solutions so to say yeah and then you um went to work uh, for yourself right like uh Yes, I was already working for myself, and uh, uh, we did. I did uh, uh, the electronic voting system for uh, sold by Olivetti, and uh, and then uh, Olivetti. Okay, things didn't go well with the marketing they were proposing, they were offering, and they did not pay for the cost of research and development. So instead of uh, going that way, I the, the software for this was ready. They only needed to make the hardware. So I made the hardware also for them. And uh, they made me a proposal to go to Florida where they had uh, uh, an engineering department in the mid uh, uh, division to build the hardware for their own use. So I moved myself and all my family to Florida. And that's how I ended up in the United States. And they built a few thousand of these devices and used around all Europe and the uh, and United States. When it was done, uh the project was over and so i stayed to work for them for another 14 years mainly in the marketing position uh selling the their media uh systems in europe and latin america that's how kind of got involved with tango because I have always been a man 
with what you say two left leg with dancing that is yeah, yeah. i was i was a disaster <laughs> yeah you have a unique uh, story about uh, about that uh... yes 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 <laughs> Uh, when I was 20 years old, there was a, in our group, there was a, a, a young girl that I liked. I liked a lot. So I invited her to dance. We went out on a Saturday night. At the end of the night, uh, she told me, if you would like to invite me again, I would be very pleased. But please, don't take me to dance again <laughs> because she was uh, a natural born dancer i was completely the opposite so after eight months we married <laughs> okay but for 29 years we never ever went to dance again 29 years wow 29 years yes that's how long it took us it took me uh after 29 years we were living in florida uh our daughters uh were in college we were alone uh at home you know in, in the united states we call it the empty nest oh yes yes yeah yeah, yeah the empty nest we were alone and uh, one saturday night we went to see the movie uh we went to see evita with madonna okay and and there is a little bit of tango dancing there and we went home and my wife started saying tomorrow i go to school dance. And I replied, I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh no, then I have I have to dance with you. <laughs> okay, we arrived to a compromise. We went to a ballroom school. Why? Because in a ballroom school, we could have one male teacher for her and one female teacher for me. So we did not have to dance together. Do you mean private lessons or? Uh, yeah, private lessons. In the ballroom style, so ballroom tango. Ballroom, yeah, all sorts of dances. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Waltz and uh, Foxtrot and... Uh, it was before the beginning of tango in the United States. Uh, let's say it was just the beginning of tango in the United States. It was, uh, you know, uh, Forever Tango, but the show from uh, Luis Bravo was just uh, be presented, uh, making his debut in the United States. And what, so what, what was, year was that? What year? It was, uh, let me check here, it was. 1996 Luis, Luis Bravo started in 1996 okay in the United States uh, Luis Bravo was touring the United States with a company made of only Argentinian professional tango dance for example, uh, Carlos Gavito was one of the dancers, very famous one. His wife, uh, another very famous tango dancer, was not because uh, she was not Argentinian. Okay. She was from the UK. So we, she was not allowed to tour with the company. The shortcut uh, in, the, in the corner. It, yeah 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 this was like um it, it it he was like like slowly rising like it was funny funny to see in the background so but he doesn't yeah. look our, he doesn't look our way so we can't see him but uh sorry for uh for interrupting your story 
So, uh, at that time, the uh, the dancer from uh, Forever Tango, uh, we have a very small tango community in uh, the Tampa Bay area in Florida, where we live. And they were coming to our milonga when, whenever we had, whenever they were in town. And so I did uh, dance with Marcella Duran, that was the star, the female star of uh, the, uh, the show. And we went out to, uh, we invited Carlos Gavito to be there. When he was the only uh, English speaking member of, uh, of, the, the, of the show, yeah, yeah. of the cast. And so my wife and I went out, invited him to dinner. Uh, and he had uh, kind of stories about his Italian background, because, you know, half the Argentinian people have some connection with Italian. At the end of a very pleasant uh, dinner, we uh, walked back to uh, our cars, he yeah, had a rental car, and we were driving our car to the parking garage where we both had parked. And uh, it was a multi level parking garage with ramps from one level to another. And he told us, Now I want to see how you dance in the garage. Yeah. In on the ramp. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So I started making some uh, movement today. and I was afraid of falling down because uh, you know dancing on a ramp is not <laughs> helpful for the balance. So I made a sudden move to stop my wife. She was doing some sort of becochos or tango uh, atras. And Carlos went kind of crazy, started, sc started screaming, El cortadito milonguero, el cortadito milonguero. It looks like I was, I had invented some sort of step that was. That had been done in Buenos Aires 100 years before. <laughs> okay. Without anybody ever telling me what to do or what not to do, it was just uh, the right way to do it. <laughs> oh. So, so you were you were there in the in the parking uh, space, and uh, but maybe one one thing is I don't understand from this is how you uh, transitioned from the ballroom lessons into a real tango. Oh, from the uh, okay. yes, I, I skipped this step. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, from the ballroom. Uh, I did, uh, Stang was just starting. So uh, there was a teacher that was starting to, wanted to start uh, Argentine Tang with the community. So he started teaching. He did not know what Argentine Tango is all about, but he did start teaching anyway. And uh, I was, working uh, for Nielsen in uh, Latin America. So I did uh, uh, travel. One of the countries was Argentina. And uh, one, I, I was visiting Buenos Aires and I asked my 
uh, Argentinian colleagues to find me a tango teacher. And uh, they were not tango dancers, but they had friends that knew what, uh, where to look for. So they found out that for a, to teach a, a man, 50 year old man that never danced tango, uh, the right person was uh, Osvaldo Coelho, a professor de tango. I don't know, it, uh, I never heard of him again after that. It kind of disappeared. I looked for for him, and I, I, I couldn't find anybody that knew him. But he was the authority for uh, teaching tango in, in those environments. So they did uh, tell him that uh, there was this uh, person, this. 50 year old person from uh, Florida that wanted to learn tango. He didn't want to teach me because I was a gringo <laughs> from America, not very well accepted in Argentina at the time. So they explained to him that, yeah, I was living in Florida, but I was not a gringo. I was an Italian living in Argent in Florida. So, okay, if he's in Italian, they, he accepted me. And so <laughs> I went to one of his uh, lesson in uh, group lesson in a very nice uh, museum in the outskirts of Buenos Aires, uh, where he had his group lesson with uh, the local Porteñas, and uh, and I was not allowed to touch any one of them. Instead, I had to dance because okay, he told me, show me how you dance. So I I did show him what I did not know. So he put me in front of a sliding door, uh, kind of a little bit open, to make becochos uh, alone with his petite wife checking on me, making sure that <laughs> I was doing the right moves. And after half an hour, she told him, okay, he did it. Next step, so next step, Okay, next time, what is, what is it? Shall, can I dance with the wife? No. <laughs> you can dance, yes, not with the door anymore, but with the teacher, with him. So I did the becochos with Osvaldo, a 60 year old <laughs> kind of <laughs> heavy man. And uh, okay, that was my first tango lesson in Buenos Aires. And that was the way they were teaching tango in 1994 there. After the first lesson, we went out for a coffee and the, some pastry and we started chatting and we became friends. And, so we had uh, the second lesson and the second lesson for the second lesson, it was kinder and he organized a session at uh, uh, an apartment downtown Buenos Aires, a very nice uh, apartment and uh, that he rented. And uh, he had one of his uh, students, a 16 year old uh, girl uh, as an assistant. And uh, so I could finally <laughs> dance with an Argentinian lady, finally. <laughs> and uh, uh, at, in the middle of the session, her 
mother shows up because the mother wanted to check what was this old man from Florida doing with his, with her daughter. Was he really dancing tango or was he trying to do something different? So those, those were the control and the checks in, at the time, <laughs> the social controls of the society. Then uh, I went back to uh, Florida and my wife was a, profession, a freelance translator. She had uh, uh, a contract with a company in Denver, Colorado uh, to uh, do a, a, a localization of the software uh, uh, into Italian. And so she had in part of this contract, they gave her uh, an apartment and the car. And uh, in Denver, uh, Gabriela Carone, a young lady from Buenos Aires had just uh, uh, accepted a position as a professor of philo philosophy at the University of Colorado. So she started, uh, she had just started teaching philosophy and her dean when uh, he was presenting her to the new class, he was prevent presenting, saying, and this is Gabriela, and she will teach you everything about Plato and tango. Because she, at the same time, she started a tango school there with group lessons and private lessons. So my wife and I uh, started, uh, were the first pri private students. So we took every single group lesson she was teaching and plus four to six hour a day or a night, I would say, of private lesson with Gabriela. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's why, that's how I got rid of my two left legs. And I started having one left and one right. Left. Your, your wife accepted you now? And yeah, it's after six months of this treatment, my wife okay. said, okay, okay, now I can dance with you. Okay. That's how I graduated. <laughs> But you do you dance together already those six months in the lessons or not? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, it took the six months to really become comfortable with uh, dancing. Yeah to, yeah. to 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 presenting. Yeah, it's very it's very hard for uh, for leaders. So uh, yeah, especially uh, if you have no experience dancing. Yes. So, uh, yes. 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 And well, that's very interesting. Um, but uh, I don't think I understand, like, what was the real reason why you started to dance Argentine tango? Was that your visit to Buenos Aires? Or was there already something before that? Like, was that that show you were talking about? Well, the 29 years was kind of a uh, heavy burden for me. Uh, uh, maybe the rejection I got when I was 20 years old. I didn't <laughs> It took me 29 years, but... No, no, that's not what I mean. I, I wanted to react. <laughs> no, that, that's not what I mean. I mean, like, um, the, the moment that you, you, you said you were doing ballroom dancing. And yeah, then no, you, no. You, ballroom you dancing was not for me. No, but then you, you'd made the transition into uh, Argentine tango. But yeah, I, 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 I wonder I what caused was the... Much, I, I felt that it was much more uh, uh, my... Uh, okay, type of yeah. my my way of dancing and yeah, more free of 
constraints yeah but but what, what caused the the um the discovery of, of of argentine tango dancing because i've i've had several stories but i don't really understand what what really caused you to to start with argentine tango maybe uh the forever tango show gave me a lot of ideas uh having being exposed for, for to uh, these uh, top performers and dancing together with them and uh, seeing that they were after all normal people and uh, i could dance uh, with the top uh, female dancer and uh, and doing very well hmm. Okay, okay. And I didn't, I did not need to be a top uh, performer. My style of dancing is not, uh, is not a show off no, no, of no. my dancing, is being a support of the lady I'm dancing with. Yes. The way in which I dance, is okay i am kind of the pole on that the my the lady i'm dancing with can use to show off the hair dancing yes 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 and very much so, the social dancing right absolutely yes. yeah 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 only yeah. social dancing no, yeah 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 no fancy sh show movements and no saccadas i no, no, no. But so, so what, 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 um, what caused you to to um, understand that that the show was not for you, but that you was it the type of teacher you had that? Um, yeah, I hope you understand my question, but it's a bit hard to uh, to define. But um, well, is. Perhaps is my relationship with my wife. I always knew that my wife was the better dancer between us. Yeah. And she was a very good dancer. So I wanted her to show her ability to dance. Yes, it's a nice perspective, actually. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, and so all the moves that I always did were to help her to show the best she, she could do. And yet, there was a speaking between us during the dance. I mean, we were dialogue. Ah, yeah, in the, in the movement, you mean? Yeah, in, in the, the movement. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I was, uh, I was initiating a movement, and maybe she was following, or maybe she was rejecting my movement. Maybe I was inviting her to do some sort of move, uh, move uh, toward inside my legs, and she once she did it, and the other time she was not doing it. I yes, mean, it was a real dialogue. Yes, yes, yes. So how did uh, so how did it move on from so when you started getting these six months of training? So how yeah. did you move on from there? Uh, this, after the six months from training, we started dancing and we started the dialogue, and finally after. 29 years and six months of training. <laughs> My wife said, okay, I dance with you and I dance with you in the way in which I don't dance with anybody else. <laughs> so that's what a real satisfaction for me. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's a unique story. Yeah. <laughs> and it also shows that you can... Um overcome these types of um, 
ideas about yourself or maybe it's not just well, an idea absolutely. maybe it was real but you can overcome it oh no i it was a disaster i really had two left legs <laughs> yes <laughs> But you can overcome it. I mean, that's if you really Absolutely. want. Absolutely. If, if you, you find something you like, you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. you have just to train, to train, to train, to train. Yeah. And after all, you know, uh, in uh, the Tampa Bay area, there is a annual uh, festival of uh, Latin American uh, music and uh, events. And every country presents uh, their own uh, special events. Uh, and uh, for Argentina, the, uh, the group of Argentinian that live there, they didn't dance tango. They wanted me and my wife to go to present tango in public on their behalf and they and that was a real satisfaction <laughs> to be recognized by somebody that really knew what tango is even if they were not real no no they were just you know am amateur tango dance like everybody in, in argentina dance tango in the family yeah? Yes, yes. But they were not comfortable in dancing it in public, but they wanted us to show in public what tango is. And uh, I feel it's stink I think it's still very much uh, not the most widespread thing even now. I mean, if think if people do think about tango, it's 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 these shows from movies or something. Yes. Yes, but yes. I imagine that that back then it was even less known that that what tango was and what a social dance was. I mean, it must have been pretty interesting being in this environment where nobody really knows what tango is, and then you can yes. show them a bit. You know, I, I uh, in Argentina, there's this um, former post office uh, in Buenos Aires. There's this former post office that has been converted into. Uh, uh, I mean, this has been changed into uh, in, in, into some kind of cultural center. Um, so uh, near the government uh, house. Um, and I remember dancing there once uh, when there was uh, was an, a special event. And there were a lot of people watching the dancers who weren't da dancers themselves. And even though most Argentines probably somehow know what tango is, or maybe they have memories of their grandparents or whatever, it's still uh, very interesting to them. And you don't really see that at Milongas, but because at Milongas, we're just uh, people who know tango, who get together and pay to dance tango. And you don't really get much outsiders. But it's it's funny if you can show uh, someone else uh, and it's a new world to them. And maybe you inspired someone to pick up dancing. You never know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> So from from there, from um, so you you uh, you danced in uh, Florida, and then you you became a social dancer. Yeah, I danced in Florida, and we became a social dancer. And then uh, my, uh, one of our daughter uh, was living in Washington D.C. Uh, because of her internship, and uh, we often. Uh, drove to visit her from Florida to Washington DC, just 18 hour drive <laughs> to go visit her. And uh, so we started dancing in uh, Washington DC because there was a better tango community. And so we became part of uh, the Washington DC uh, tango community. And uh, in addition, we were visiting what every single uh, venue where we could dance. And, uh, you know, my wife took every single workshop from uh, the ladies uh, that were part of the Forever Tango show, uh, like uh, Daniel Arcuri, Karina Piazza, and then Fernanda 
uh, Guy and Marcel Duran, they were teaching workshops for women to make uh, uh, adornos, mm -hmm. adornos for social dancing, not adornos for show. That is being very careful not to hurt anybody dancing around you. It takes a lot of attention for a lady on how to move properly. Yes. Not to hurt the people, we, the other couples. And yeah, my wife uh, took every single workshop and she became very uh, well expert in these techniques. And whenever we went out to, to a new place to dance uh, uh, tango, for example, we went several times to Miami and Hallandale on, on the East Coast, where the tango community is uh, much uh, more established. And we were dancing and she was showing off her adornos. That had, she had learned from uh, her Argentinian uh, teachers. And whenever she was doing those adornos, you could see that immediately after, a lot of the ladies in the Milonga, they were starting moving their legs, trying to imitate. <laughs> but without knowing the proper techniques. Yes, well, made quite a quite an impression. Yeah. Let me think. So one thing I'd like to, to know as well, uh, is whether you, you had any more history with uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, I don't have any more histories with Buenos Aires, but I have some history about uh, uh, virtual tango, I mean, targo, tango on the internet, about uh, the mailing before uh, Facebook, there was no Facebook. My the founder of Facebook was uh, 13 years old at the time. So already there was a Tango L mailing list. That is, there was a need to for the people dancing Tango worldwide to connect to each other and to exchange uh, ideas and experience and whatever they wanted to exchange and talk about tango. Yeah, ju just for context. So a lot of things we take granted nowadays with Facebook and uh, it's just there, there there was almost nothing back then, but people still had the, the, the need to, to, to oh, start sharing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the communication was with a modem. I mean, a 1200 baud modem. <laughs> it took forever to send the message. And the mess you sent the message to a mailing list server and the server was distributing the message, the message to whoever was subscribing to the list. And uh, uh, For example, virtu virtual tango, there were a lot of funny humor discussions. Like, do you know what a tea spot is in a woman? It's like the G spot. The G spot is, you know, somewhere in the woman body. The T spot is in a different position in the woman body. I mean, you know, the G spot is somewhere down there. 
the T spot is in the chest. And the T spot is where a woman gets uh, tangasmo, that is uh, the excitement in dancing in close embrace. And there was months of exchange of messages about the existence or not existence of uh, the T spot and the discussion of what the university of which university in uh, Argentina had demonstrated the existence of uh, the T spot. I mean, we were joking, <laughs> taking humor. Yes, yes. Just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand there was a. A demand to, for this type of communication. Uh, yes, then. but uh, also uh, one of the uh, consideration was uh, back in two thousand three. I read it. Tango soon one out of three couples will be forward in chats more and more widespread the virtual tango that was a posting from uh, Pedro Pugliese in 2003. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's well before Facebook. Yes, yes. And another one is healing from tango and the tangoist addiction is possible. I mean, it can be cured because people were just addicted to the tangoist and they couldn't stop writing and reading. So this, this was uh, in English or in Italian? Uh, Tango L was a English Tango list, worldwide Tango list. Okay. Part, some of the members were Italians, like uh, uh, Patricia Buller that you hosted, I believe, last week or so. And, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, I was part of it. And uh, Piero Lely was another member. Piero Lely uh, was an Italian doctor, a gynecologist, uh, and he was, he founded uh, uh, the Italian Association of Tango uh, Communities. And then he, he was president for several years. And I, uh, I saw that, uh, the list was in English, so I knew that not every Italian is comfortable mm -hmm. or was comfortable uh, writing in English. Maybe they could read the posting. Writing is a different story. Uh, uh, so I found I found that Tango Italia. That is the equivalent uh, mailing list in Italia. And after a few years, I donated it when it had several thousand uh, members. I donated the, uh, it to uh, Fai, Fai Italia, the, the, it, Piero Lely and this uh, yeah. his group. Yes. Because it, it required, okay. It, uh, you need the supervision and maintenance and yes but you 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 were the one who pioneered it in a sense, Italian, Italian yeah. in the Italian version yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yes and uh,
so it was fulfilling some kind of need uh, as as well for you personally to uh, to exchange things about this uh, dance about uh, about uh, yeah yes because also founding tango italia you know i was i am in italia living in the united states so yes i am comfortable speaking speaking italian and speaking america english uh, so i am kind of in in between the two cultures yes and uh, uh, and uh, I am uh, founding Tango Italia was a way for me to keep in contact with uh, a tango community that I did not know. Yes. Close. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, you know what? Uh, when I go, uh, last time I danced in Italy was kind of uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I found that dancing with Italian ladies is much, for me, is much easier than dancing with American okay. ladies. They are may, maybe the musicality, maybe I, I don't know what it is. Maybe in this country, the teachers don't teach musicality, they teach steps. Okay, okay. And if you don't uh, do the step that they teach, the lady, sometimes the lady gets lost. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Doesn't know how to follow you. Yes. And I found this very frustrating. Okay. So that's different, of course, from my wife. My wife was following, and <laughs> and I found the same with uh, the Italian ladies when they danced in, in Milan. So you mean their level is higher, in a way. Uh, oh yes, in my opinion, yes. Okay, but maybe only in Milan, or were you also in other places? Uh, well, I only danced in Milan. Okay, yeah, yeah, but that's of course the whole, the, the rest of the country could be different. But the that's it, you know, that's the same here in my country. Like some cities have a certain dance style of dancing, and some cities have a higher level of dancing, even though that might be subjective. So that, that's always difficult. But yeah, yeah it's yeah, interesting absolutely. that you that yes. you saw a difference between uh, between these two countries, between the U.S. and uh, and Italy. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. You know, I, I found out that uh, uh, my knee, my nephew, uh, uh, he lived with me in Florida for a year when he was a teenager. Now he's back in Milan, uh, and he is a very new DJ. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I found out uh, uh, that he is now involved, very involved in with tango there. And he took me uh, with his wife to a milonga in Milan. And so it was my birthday, and they made you know the usual uh, birthday dance. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my birthday dance is Desde l'Alma of Pugliese. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, it has a lot of poses and change of rhythm. And uh, every single lady followed me very well. Okay. And was very exciting dancing with them. I danced the same music here in the US, a couple of the ladies at a certain point didn't know what to do. They yes. just stopped. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that's so quite it, uh, different. Pro probably they, nobody told them, okay, there is something called a pose. Yes, yes. In dancing, you can pose. Yes. And then wait for the music to restart. And that's the excitement 
of dancing. Okay, okay. So maybe uh, something interesting uh, would be is that you're also a publisher, and we didn't really oh, talk yeah. about that in uh, in the in, in the introduction. But uh, maybe, and I mean, I mean, uh, whatever from what I've understood is that you uh, publish a lot of things that are not related to tango, but you have published some things that are related to tango. So that might yes, be interesting I to mention. I publish uh, several books on tango, uh, books on. Uh, uh, I did not write anything on tango, but I published uh, books on uh, written by uh, others, okay. uh, by uh, uh, very uh, one more second. Okay, this is the first one. It's El Mamifero Tanguero. This is 2001. Is a book on uh, uh, from Piero Lely on excerpt from the Tango List. Very funny. And very, uh, very humor, tango humor that treats tango in a medical scientific way. Discussion. Yes. Then I publish uh, more serious books, like uh, uh, books from uh, uh, Anton Gazenbeck on tango argentino that's the entire story of the show that resurrected tango after uh, the military dictatorship ended in 1983 you know tango had kind of died during the military regime in argentina after the military regime ended in 1983, uh, Segovia, two gentlemen, Segovia and, and his partner, uh, set up a show, started a show, Tango Argentino, uh, hiring a lot of dancers. Uh, El Virulazo, uh, Maria Copes, uh, many known, many other less known, and they uh, toured the world. They started uh, going to Paris with a military airplane because they didn't have the money to pay for transportation. They just got a passage on a military transport. Nobody wanted the show in Argentina. So they went to Paris to uh, premiere the show. And in Paris, it was a success. And uh, from Paris in a few years, they were in Broadway and they were all around the world, Japan. And, and after a few years, they were back to El Colón in, in Buenos Aires. <laughs> Finally, they made it. Yes. And this book uh, written by Gazenbeck as all the details of what happened with the show, I, I mean, this show was set up, what the costume, how the costumes were made, and the, the, all the show, all the places where they did perform, 
or the performers. And uh, uh, so I published it in English, in Italian, and in Spanish. Uh, then I publish all the books from uh, Patricia Muller. Yes, that was mentioned last time. Yeah, Austin. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then a few others on, uh, um, on that. And then I have my, uh, I publish my own, the books that I write on uh, tourism in Italy. Okay. Well, I will add a, a link to your website so that people can, uh, or maybe your uh, headphones. Oh, sorry, I, I lost. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 I noticed the sound quality, but I didn't want to interrupt your story, but it seemed like your uh, cable was uh, removed. Yeah, my cable got disconnected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you couldn't hear me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, what did I want to say? Yeah, I, I will add uh, links uh, to your website so that people can uh, check out your work. I mean, uh, as a it's publisher, and you're, and you're as a writer as well. Yeah, yeah. It's italian.visits.com. Yes, yes, yes. And it has all tango and not tango books. Yes, yes, yes. In different languages, because many of the tourist books, well, even the tango books have been translated in different languages. This is maybe a bit of a strange question, but um, wh why did you, uh, or how did you decide to do this publishing on tango books? Oh, uh. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I got into, I got connected with Anton Gazenbeck mm -hmm. because he had his book uh, published on Amazon with a very ugly cover. Hmm. So, uh, first I got the rights to translate it into Italian and to publish it in uh, e digital format ebook and print format in uh, in Italian. Then I told him. Anton, your cover is ugly. <laughs> well, okay, after a while he accepted my, my recommendation because he recognizes that today to sell a book on uh, the internet you, you need, need to catch to the attention or you need to, to catch yeah, visually. Yeah, yeah 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 so uh, i i worked with uh starting from a nice picture taken from a, an argentinian professional photographer that now lives here in uh, annapolis that is uh, in the dc suburb area so when, do, do you maybe have the, the book to show us there? One second. Yeah, Before, watch out for your cable, yeah. Yeah, watch out for the cable. Yeah. Here it is, and the cable is still here. Good. Now, okay. this is the new cover. Okay. The picture is from a professional photographer. It's taken in Buenos Aires, you know, in one of 
uh, the bridges in Buenos Aires. He was, uh -huh. he had a, a professional business selling uh, photos in Buenos Aires. Now he lives here in, uh, in Maryland, near the sea. Uh, it was worked by a graphic designer uh, from Bosnia. Okay. So it was a kind of international cooperation. Yes, yes. That, uh, you know, it worked out uh, all the details and you see now here, for example, the red socks <laughs> are coming out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in contrast with the black and white, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it takes, a, you don't realize it, but it takes a lot of work and effort to come up with something like this. Yes, yes. But, uh, um, so you didn't include a picture of the actual show? No, it's all inside the book. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, the original, the original cover was this picture. Uh -huh. No, yeah, it's a nice picture, but uh, it doesn't catch the attention to sell a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as a publisher, you you should know about these things, right? Because yeah. uh, I mean, there's part of writing something, but you also need to uh, commercialize something, and that's. Uh... You know, it's 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 a shame if you do something good and then nobody sees it. I mean, that's that's kind of sad. So yeah, uh, you know, there are three million books on Amazon. Yes, <laughs> three million. Yeah, yeah. So you need so to you do something to, be... to stand out, right? Yeah. 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 But I'm yeah. So. Um, are you planning to 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 publish more on on tango? Uh... Uh, not actively. Uh, I'm more concentrating on uh, the publish activities on my tourist books. Yes, and uh, uh, really on marketing like uh, how to promote uh, the books on to uh, bookstores and uh, private uh, consumers and uh, people that can buy it and resell it and so and kind of shifting from uh, uh, making new books into selling better what I have. So do you also do that for the tango books or are you just talking about the more general ones, the, the travel ones? No, also the tango books, yes. So is there also a broader market for that or is it just the people who are like already dancing and are on Facebook or is it also a bro broader? Uh, sorry for the difficult well, questions, but uh, it's... The uh, market for uh, uh, tango books in the last couple of years have been kind of depressed. Okay, okay. Uh, I've been selling Tango books uh, for a number of years. I had, and I still have the website tangodancers.com and uh, tango-dancers.com and uh, all the Tango books uh, I've been present there and are still present there, and I've been selling them for the number of years uh, until recently they were uh, on sale only through PayPal mm -hmm. payment. Now, with my uh, Italian visits.com, you can buy with a lot of different payment methods, and that's what people want. 
they want a choice of uh, payment. And uh, uh, I, I've been uh, selling also uh, on commission the books from uh, uh, Abrazos, uh, the company of uh, Daniel Canut in Stuttgart. And uh, he has a very extensive catalog of very good uh, tango books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been selling uh, his books and he has been selling my books, tango books. So it's, it's a mutual uh, relationship. We don't compete, we just cooperate in. But we both agree that the market for the tango books is has been depressed. Okay, okay. For <laughs> tango, people don't want to read about tango. No. <laughs> people, maybe they want to dance tango. Okay. Maybe people want to watch some tango on Facebook. Definitely, they don't want to pay even okay. a nominal, even the. I have a few uh, video on demand. Uh, items that you can rent for a nominal fee one dollar for 24 hour view for a top show a two hour show nobody wants to pay because okay they can go to facebook and see whatever is available there and and so after a while I told uh, some of these videos were are made by Anton Gazenbeck and, and his husband, very well done uh, shows uh, shot in uh, New York City. And they, we have been discussing, you see, Anton, they are nobody's buying them. Why? Because they go to Facebook. They say they see whatever they see, and maybe they have a message please send me $10 to pay for my cost. So his answer was okay, do you know what the Dinzels told me? Are you an artist or are you a beggar? Because if you are an artist, you want to be paid for your artist knowledge. If yeah. you are a beggar, it's a different story. Then you are a beggar. <laughs> so now, <laughs> that's the end of <laughs> the story of Make, trying to make uh, video on demand tango <laughs> available. Yes, well, it's always worth trying, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, very well done uh, presentations, and nobody wants to see them. I mean, one of the video on demand that I have is. Uh, the last uh, uh, show uh, Horacio Ferrer was as done in Turing years ago. Doesn't sell. Not okay. even one dollar. I mean, there is no possibility to see him again. He's he died. 
is the only possibility to see him live, live. I mean, performing and with interviews and speaking about the history of tango. And, and are these videos available on, uh, on your site? Uh, let me see. Let me check one second. I don't want to throw you under the bus. Okay. Yes, they are. Horacio Ferrer, El Poeta del Tango, is tango-dances.com. There is a section that is videos. There is one for Horacio Ferrer, Renting is two uh, two dollar ninety nine for twenty four hours. Is is the last show that he? he made. Yes, I, I would like to include a link. Uh, so if you can send me the link uh, afterwards, yeah. and I'll include it in in the description of the video. Absolutely, yes. I think uh, uh, yes, there we is, have to, uh, and then and then there is uh, the there is the uh, exercise that that you can do alone, and then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will send you the link. Yes. So I think uh, this is it uh, for now. Uh, so I've uh, well, I heard a lot of uh, interesting stories from the past. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you a lot for uh, sharing these, uh, the personal site and also the mailing list. So uh, I'm sure there has been uh, a lot of interesting new perspectives uh, for people uh, who have listened to this and uh well thank you a lot uh, for being there and uh, you were here on the recommendation of your friend uh, patricia so i also want to thank her for uh for inviting you or uh, recommending you forwarding you uh so uh because i love uh, especially love all these stories uh, from back in the day from times that i haven't lived myself but i just like uh, how different uh, these times were in many ways and uh well thank you okay. for uh, where is, that. where is uh, you are recording? Are you posting your uh, your uh, uh, interviews on uh, on YouTube on internet? Yes, I post them on YouTube, and then I post them um, on uh, on. Uh, yeah, because uh, for uh, I include in in the, in my website everything that is. Uh, uh, interesting for example i have uh the the tandas of the week uh, you know the the gentleman in the yeah, Netherlands yeah, that, yeah. Uh, uh, because i believe that is very in he has very interesting stories and perspectives and yeah he published it on the internet but they get lost if you what, don't what, what do you mean If you don't if you don't save the link, you don't know how to get them. Oh yeah, okay, like that. Yeah, so yeah. I, I put all, as much as I can on my video on my page of video, so you can know where to go to find them. Yes. 
yes uh well um thanks uh, for today and uh um hopefully see you uh, another time okay